Considering the spread of the virus and based on the recommendation of medical and health experts, an intense lockdown will be enforced from midnight of June 19th to midnight of June 30th. Unfortunately for India, uh, a lot of the manufacturing industry is actually located in the very states where the pandemic's impact has been great. So Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Delhi. Now, so these are the areas where naturally workers have left in large numbers. For more on this story, let's speak to Nikita Sood. She's an Associate Professor of Development Studies specialising in India at the University of Oxford. Thank you for joining us here on Money Talks. The IMF has significantly lowered the growth forecast for India in real world terms. What impact is that going to have on average Indian families across the country? So we were already facing economic trouble before COVID hit. Uh, we had unemployment at a 45-year high um, till March uh, 2020. So already we were in trouble and our consistently rising GDP was looking like it would take a hit this year. Um, so COVID has really, uh, you know, slammed the brakes further on that. So it was a bad economy that has definitely got worse and you know it, it will continue on that sort of trajectory what that looks like for ordinary people uh, under lockdown right now um, is that according to one study 139 million households in india will have run out of all their savings by the end of june uh, and this includes 30 percent of the population of urban india so people are going to run out of savings out of money to buy food uh, the economic sectors which employed them, construction, manufacturing, etc., already retrenching. They were before March, before the lockdown, and they will retrench further. Um, so even when things begin to open up and the economy starts uh, chugging once again, there won't be jobs to go to for these uh, particularly vulnerable people. And that's very worrying. Nikita, those numbers are staggering. We've heard millions of migrant workers have left those economic hubs and returned home to their villages. With more lockdowns on the cards, what are the prospects that they're going to be able to regain employment in any time soon in the months ahead? So what's happening is that uh, many of the migrants who you saw on your TV screens, etc., making their way back to their villages and small towns from urban India and from manufacturing hubs, uh, many of them went to uh, their, particularly to their rural homes when uh, the harvest, spring harvest season was on. Um, so some of them did find employment there. Um, of course, because there was a glut of human, uh, human resources in that area, the prices uh, that people were getting for their labor have also been following, mm -hmm. uh, have also been falling. And we've seen a lot of uh, rise in child labor. So families are vulnerable. 
people and uh, employers, including in the farms, are paying uh, very little to employ young children in their farms to do harvesting, to do basic jobs. And we fear similar things will be seen in urban India as well, uh, where child labor and vulnerable labor is likely to be exploited in these extremely difficult and crunched conditions. Mm. Nikita, the government has announced a $270 billion bailout package. What's your impression of that? Is, should that money or some of that money have been better spent on social welfare services, considering how difficult things are for people? Yes, absolutely. So the government uh, has been, you know, trying to rally and by some estimates it has committed something like 10% of the GDP to various aspects of the bailout. Um, but critics say that this is just sort of putting together different programs that already existed, that had already been committed in the budget, uh, which have just been, you know, played around with. And we're getting this figure of 10%. And actually, in effect, we are looking like 1% of the GDP being, uh, you know, allocated to various COVID-related relief measures. Um, so the figures are a bit questionable. Um, what we really need to see is how that money is going to be used. And we already know that the government claims that something like 22 billion uh, pounds worth of uh, ration of food, grain and other relief measures have been given to the very poorest. But we also know that many people, uh, because they migrated from where they were working to places where, you know, they don't, they are not registered as welfare recipients. Not everyone has been getting the welfare that the government has been making available. So there are also, uh, you know, supply, uh, supply mm -hmm. side issues that are going on here. So I think the government is trying. It is it is not a particularly um, coherent sort of effort because there sometimes are gaps between what the subnational governments are trying, what the national government is trying. Um, so, yeah, there are lots of slippages. Mm, very difficult times indeed. Nikita Sood, thank you for joining us live there from Oxford.